Hello there, welcome to the October 2020 Applied Paper. Here we're looking at question four. A lake contains three different types of carp. There are an estimated 450 mirror carp, 300 leather carp, and 850 common carp. Tim wishes to investigate the health of the fish in the lake. He decides to take a sample of 160 fish. Give a reason why a stratified random sample can't be used. Well, if we have a look at what it says in the mark scheme, it says it's not possible to have a sampling frame. And a sampling frame is a list of all the fish that is in the lake. And then you can pick out from that sample um, your random uh, stratified sampling, your proportions of the groups that you would like to select uh, your 160 fish from. So it should be in proportion to the size of the groups. We don't have a sampling frame, we don't have a list of all the fish, the names of all the fish, etc, um, etc. Et so we don't have a sampling frame. Another reason why a stratified sampling can't be used is that um, we can't be sure that we're picking the um, fish out of the lake at random. We could be, if we're fishing for them, for example, we could just be catching those that are particularly prone to being caught or particularly hungry that day um, or particularly uh, ravenous in general or, or weighty and throwing their weight around in terms of the other fish, making sure they get the bait and no one else does. So it's not going to be a random sample because the fish that we catch um, might not be chosen at random. Even if we keep the fish out of the lake and don't throw them back in, um, we may only get those fish that are more prone to being caught. So a stratified random sample would ensure that the fish that we pick out of the lake are chosen at random, whereas rather um, the, the situation that we're in, it's unlikely that we're going to be able to pick at random these fish from the lake. Moving on to part B, explain how a sample size of 160 could be taken to ensure that an estimated population of each type of carp are fairly represented. Well, a good way of doing this without reading the mark scheme is to go fishing and then um, make a note of the proportions that we want here. I think these fish add up to 1,000 600. So on each type of fish, we'd want 45 on the mirror. We'd want 30 on the leather. And 85 on the common carp, that is. So we would want to catch these amount of each different type of fish. Uh, we'd go fishing and then if we caught one that we wanted, yeah, we'll measure it and weigh it and throw it back in or keep it out on a separate um, area that, for the fish to, to still swim a little round in. Um, and then if we catch, say we've already caught all 45 mirror fish and we're looking for some more leather and common, but we catch another mirror, we just toss that one back in uh, and not count it. So we would catch this amount of fish um, and then if we've already, if we catch another fish of this type, then we release it back again. So this, this type of method is a quota sampling. We're just going to continue to sample until we've reached our quotas, which are these type of fish and this amount of fish. So we catch these types of carp uh, and then any extra that we catch, we just toss them back in. And this type of sampling is called a quota sampling. We just keep on sampling until we have enough in proportion to the amount of types of carps that we catch. So the difference between stratified random sampling and quota sampling is that in a stratified random sample, we ensure that the people that we pick are randomly chosen in their, in their specified groups. But with quota sampling, we just continue going uh, at, the, at our easiest convenience, which is just to fish and pull one out. Um, and then and then make a note of the weights of the fish and how many types of fish we've caught, releasing any that we have that are caught extra. OK, so there we are. That's the answer to part A and B. Let's uh, move on to question C. As part of the health check, Tim weighs the fish. Uh, his results are given in the table to the right. Calculate an estimate for the standard deviation of the weight of the carp. So we all know that the standard deviation formula is going to be the sum of f of x squared over n minus the sum of f of x over n all squared, that's the mean squared. 
So how many fish do we have in total here? So I think that's 160, but let's just check. 8 plus 32 plus 64 plus 40 plus 16. Uh, yep, that's, a hun that's uh, 160. So n equals 160. And then let's type that all into the calculator then. So what we're going to type in, just write down in your notes what you're going to be typing in. 3053 divided by 160 minus 692 divided by 160 squared. And when you put all of that into the calculator, let's just type all of that in, you're going to get 0 0.613. 0.613 is the answer to part C. Moving on to part D, Tim realised that he has transposed the figures for two of the weight of the fish. He has recorded in the table 2.3 instead of 3.2 and 3.6 instead of 6.4. Without calculating an estimate for the standard deviation, state the effect of using the correct figure of 3.2 instead of 2.3. Uh, well, in that case, let's have a little look at the mark scheme. Uh, this data would have no effect on the piece of data would remain in the same class because if we have a little look back at our data set, uh, 3.2 and 2.3 would still remain in that same class of 2 to 3.5, so that's not really going to have any effect. And using 6.4 instead of 4.6, uh, this would increase the standard deviation because a change in the mean is small, um, and 6.4 minus 4.6 uh, is equal to 3 uh, sigma. So uh, let's just have a little look at what that means there. So 4.6 and 6.4, yeah, they're going to be completely different positions here, uh, which is going to be um, statistically different from the, um, from the mean. The mean is going to be 692 over 160. So yeah, it's quite a way further from the standard deviation than it was before. And it's also in a different group as well. So it's in a different group and it's quite a way further from the standard deviation. So therefore the standard deviation will increase because the new piece of data uh, is further away. But given that it's only one piece of data out of 160 pieces of data, it should only have a marginal effect. So there we are, that's the answer for question four, worth uh, seven marks in total. Let's move on to question five.